All right, we're drawing Michael Myers today. So I always start off with this, the stick figure, just to get a general idea of what I want. Using the various different tools, I will uh, modify his pose. Well, you see with this original picture, I originally had him with the knife, but I realized that that angle just did not work for me. So the first layer, the second layer, or second or third layer, I really can't tell off of this, but what I'll typically do is after I do the stick figure lines, I'll add the shapes, but here I just went, because I was doing the stream, I just went straight into drawing it. We have a lot of references in this. I used a reference, ended up using a reference from this toy because I really liked the way that it looked. I really liked the pose that they put him in. And the other picture I used for reference, I just wanted to get on his mask. So here I'm using the G pen. Now I gotta find a better pen to use because the G pen, it tapers off at the end, but I learned how to kind of control that or, or account for that when I draw. And I always draw my lines on a vector layer. Vector layers are going to help you manipulate without losing the size or the quality of what you're creating. The eyes were the hardest part, honestly, because there's no emotion to them, they're just holes. And I've never really drawn a mask before. So what I did was I drew the eyes on a separate layer and then I added the eye holes. I learned something about lips when I was doing the lips that where the top part of your lip bends to goes where the middle lines are. I don't even know what the hell that's called, but. So how I did these dashed lines is going into the layer property or into the pen property, I can change the way that the pen comes out. And there's actually a dashed line I'm like, that's gonna go good for uh, for jeans. Whenever I add details like this, I always add them on a, their own layer because when you color it, I like to color with the fill tool and the paint bucket. And when you have too many details, it'll it'll just make it more difficult to fill in. So it's better to do your, your uh, details on a separate layer. Now, even though Freddy Krueger is not in the movie, all right, this is not an Easter egg. My homie job, Diaz, he was like, yo, that'd be cool if that was Freddy's head that he was holding instead of like a random person's head. So I was like, sure, why not? That random head was kind of looking like Ichigo from Bleach anyway. So so when I, before I add the colors, I'll add a base color to the whole background so that way you can see whatever bleeds through. And I use the blending tool a lot whenever I am adding my colors and everything. I've only started doing this recently I'm still learning more about it. And as you see, after I added that line of that layer of color, I started adding even more details because the details are just going on top of that. With this Michael mask, there's a lot of damage, a lot of messed upness. I was trying to uh, emulate that as well. And then like I did with my last picture, using the highlight tool really helps. That highlight, it's pretty awesome. It really gives a lot of nice, cool depth to things. So at this point now, this is when I use my correction layer to do the bigger shading. So I add, I add a bunch of shading to all of my pictures. I'll do one with the fill tool and a paintbrush and then the other one with this corrective layer. And then I'll use the blending tool to smooth out the edges. And I'll do two levels of shading and then one level for light. And then I'll do a separate inking. Inking I'm still getting I'm still getting the hang of because the problem when you do inking and shading is that it feels like you're losing parts of your picture. So I, I downloaded or saved a whole bunch of tutorials so that way I can hopefully learn how to be better at this. So how I added the blood. So first I went online and I looked up the blood color RGB so I can get that correct shade. And then using the lasso tool, I just do a whole bunch of random shapes just to simulate the blood all over him. I decided when I was doing Freddy, after I fill in all of these uh, empty spaces, I was like, you know what, let me take these black lines away because you notice on the picture, it just looks supposed to look like skin on the picture off to the right. So what I do after I fill in all the colors 
is because I need the color, I need the lines so that way the colors stay where they need to be. And I do all my shading and everything this way. And then I take the lines away and using the paint unfilled area section of the fill bucket tool, I'm able to paint the line where the lines uh, left the space. So for Freddy's blood, I decided to give him a few different shades of blood. I gave him a really dark blood. Then I gave him a darker red and a lighter red. And then I went to, I'm not sure, I forget what this tool is called, but it's something that enables you to add a whole bunch of little dots. And that's what I did to add the effect you're gonna see here soon, which is right here, those dots in between Michael and Freddy's head. It's a, it's a tool that literally is for blood splatter. It's pretty awesome. And then just import the image, add some more blending and light, and then add my name. And there we have it. So what I'm going to be working on later on is some wrestlers and hell yeah. Uh, join me on the stream and thanks for watching. I'm out of here.